Cozy no repeat. Cosa Nostra restaurant. 157 Harlow Street. A disturbance. Any unit to deal? Yeah, we're taking that, Polly. Desperate for Boyden and Scotch, aren't you? <laughs> Look, Steve, if Sergeant Boyden's going around giving out gifts for people who get the most arrests, I'm perfectly happy to take them. Yeah, dream on, Reg. You're gonna pay the bill. Well, I'm not gonna pay the bill. Yeah. Right. Oh, hey, 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 Excuse me, sir, mean? can you tell me what's happening? I'll take it you are in charge. Yes, I'm the manager. And I've been trying to get some money, or at least some sense out of that idiot for the last ten minutes. Was he refusing to pay his bill? Yeah, he said the food wasn't good enough. But he had most of it, and he certainly enjoyed the wine. Tell me your name, please. Is that sir? wine. Sir? That wine. Sir, is he alone? Tell me your name, please. Sir. No, no. Uh, there was a blonde woman with him to start. Tell me your name. She did a runner just after we gave him the bill. I asked him to settle up, and all he could do was talk about his civil rights. Get up. Attorney, sir. Spread. Let go of me. This is an assault. I'm going home! No, you're not right. yet, you're not. You've been arrested for being drunk with the shortly. You don't have to say it's your case to do so, what's the same may be given evidence. All right. My civil liberties are being infringed. Mm, yes, yeah, so are mine. Come on. Forget it. There's no damage anyway. Not good. No. Hey, hey. Don't try that again. Alright? All right. You're not helping yeah, yourself, you know, mate. Well, what about the money he owes? Has he left his name and address? Yeah, oh, well, I think got it's got best if I pass on those details when well, I get them. Right. Yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah, Dan's busy. Yeah, right. We'll have to take him. Oh, no. <laughs> Come on. Look, look, look. look. In you get. Look. Quiet, look. in you get. No. That was a disgusting meal. Yeah, certainly, isn't it? And I don't have to pay for a disgusting meal. I know you're You know? Something wrong here. Why is it? Feels like a flat. Brilliant. Those girls did some damage after all. Let the air out of the tyre. Oh, it's hardly damaged, Steve. You can fix that in a couple of minutes. We can fix it. Oh. Where's the jack? Tony said he was going to get it fixed. And there's no replacement, and the trolley jacks with the van. Great. Well, I suppose things can always be worse. Uh, uh, I'm kind of puke. Not in the car. Oh, over me, you ain't. No. Oh. He was right about that food being disgusting. That's got to be furlong. You try it. Yeah, that's good. You're from Seattle, I'm receiving. Go ahead, Steve. Harlow Street, we've got a problem. One flat tyre, no jack, and I gather the van's not free at the moment. Tell him we'll call the AA. He's gonna love that. <laughs> Steve, we're sending the AA out to help you. Oh, can't you find someone else? Just makes me look really stupid having them around. It's the best I can do. We've also got one body. Can we have some transport, a police vehicle if possible? He's getting as bad as Tony when it comes to that car. Well, you know what to say about men that drive big cars, don't you? It isn't true, though. Not in my experience, anyway. I changed the wheel for you myself, Steve, but I don't think my jack could take the weight of your huge car. It can only cope with little girly vehicles. Keep your windows open, Steve. And you keep your mouth shut, Reg. Don't you know anything about the law? How do you think I got the stripes then? Going the same lodge as your boss, I suspect. Stood up and told us your name, have you? No, and no, I'm not going to either. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, well, <laughs> you're the one with sick on your shirt. Down. Okay, on your side. Uh, side. Uh, when you ring, son. Right, let's go.
The sound. Since he didn't have a wallet on him tonight or any money, I got a chance of doing it for criminal deception as well, not I? Yeah, it depends if he had any money when he went in. Someone might have nicked his wallet in the restaurant. Yeah, but uh, well, there is a chance of doing it with deception. I'd like to ask him if he ever had a wallet on him tonight. Yeah, well, I'll let you know when he's fit to be interviewed. In the meantime, it's drunk and disorderly, two points. Proved a deception, you get the full four. You do know he was with a woman in the restaurant, don't you? And that she scarpered when it was time to pay her? Yeah, well, that's women for you, Reg. Still smelling stuff. Yeah, I'm very sorry about that, Reg. Yeah, well, I suppose you'd have been happy if we'd nicked those two girls. What for? A fence under the Naughty Little Girls Act? Oh, Section 28 of the Road Traffic Act. Oh, yeah, a case went to court, what, only a couple of months ago? Yeah, letting the air out of car tyres counts as causing a danger to other road users. Maximum penalty on indictment is seven years. So, you see, it is an arrestable offence. And why didn't you tell us about that before? Well, personally, I think it's a bit over the top, but if it's just kids mucking about. Personally, I think they want locking up. Tell us about it, go on. All units from Sierra 1, attention requested to two females, both IC1, aged about 16, one's got long curly hair, she's wearing a silver jacket and a short skirt. Looks like we could be after the same girls, better let them know. Oh. Sierra 1 from 181. We saw her in Harlow Street, Sarge, with another girl who was trying to open the boot of the area car. This would have been crouched down by the rear offside tyre, which I later discovered had been deflated. Where's the other girl? Oh, she got away. I blame George. He's getting very slow. Yeah, well, never mind about that. Is that all you've got on her? No, Sarge. Criminal damage and theft. Of what? Milk bottles. Right. Time to check the prisoner. Mustn't leave her drunk for more than half an hour. Steve, can I have a word? You big bully. What are you playing at? It's an arrestable offence, Sarge. Section 22A of the Road Traffic Act. Causing danger to road users by interfering with a motor vehicle. Seven years on indictment. You sure? Reg told me. Oh, well, it must be right. Oh, somebody teaching you the law at last. You know, you should read books about the law, then you'd know you couldn't arrest me. And then I suppose you can't read. Finished? Good. I want a drink. Right. I'll fetch the wine list. Or would you prefer a little sparkling mineral water? Yes. Get me some water. I'm gonna dock points for this. Get Mr. X some water, will you, Reg? Go, oh, son. Mm. I'm only 16. Does that make a difference to how you treat me? Yeah. What's your name? Mary Hale. 27 Beach in Crescent. You gonna fetch me mum now? M Mrs. Hale? Yes? Uh, WPC Ackland, Son Hill. Look, I'm sorry to bother you this time of night. Oh, it's all right, dear. Yeah. Now, what did you want? I don't suppose you've got a daughter called Mary. No, dear, no daughters. Two sons. Uh, one's the deputy headmaster in Durham, and the other one's in Australia. Sydney. That's where he lives. It's not his name. He's called Malcolm. <laughs> it's, uh, oh, sorry. What did you want? I didn't hear you knock. Shout if you need any help, Sarge. You're not Mary Hale, are you? And your mother's not Mrs Hale. Well, it would be a miracle of science if she was. But I am 16, though. So I really think you should get me an appropriate adult. Don't you? You've been nicked before, haven't you? I'm saying nothing till I've got a grown-up holding my hand. OK. Who do you want this time? And make sure it's a relative. No. I can't help you there. I'll tell you what, though. You get me a social worker, and I'll be as good as gold. I'll take ages. Well, that's OK. I could do with a quiet night in. <sighs> Mr. 
Come on, Mary. One social worker, yeah? Have fun. Excuse me, that's my boyfriend's. Look, I, I was just looking after it for him while we're in the restaurant. Oh, yeah. Laurie Coleman, so. Back in a minute. Any more pockets? No, I haven't. Then would you mind not doing that? You've got no right to keep me here. Oh, but I do, Mr. Coleman. How did you know my name? What right have you got to know my name? I'm sorry, but I think you're wrong, Mr. Coleman. But if it upsets you, Mr. Coleman, I could always call you Laurie. <laughs> She says her name's Annie Barlow, and she's 17, not 16, so you don't need me anymore. What was she playing then? It's almost as if she's enjoying all the attention. What, being locked up? Or maybe her home life is a much cop, eh? Well, it must be a bit grim if she'd rather be here. <laughs> now, look, Steve, if Carmen was deliberately deceiving the restaurant, perhaps she'll tell us about it. She might. Oh, I thought you'd be keen to nail him after all that vomit. I am keen. Stop talking about the vomit, will you? Oh, what, you don't mean to bring it up again? <laughs> I spy with my little eyes something beginning with P. Annie Barlow? No, that would be AB. I said P for policeman. Is your name Annie Barlow? Yeah. What's yours, big boy? Did you tamper with the rear offside tyre of a marked police vehicle earlier tonight? Reply, none. I have nothing to say. No comment. No answer. No speaker the English. <laughs> You're not helping yourself here, you know, honey. What were you doing crouched down by the car? It wasn't me. Who was your friend? Come on, honey. Who was the other girl? No reply, no reply, no reply, no reply. I can do this all night, you know. No reply, no reply, no reply. No reply, no reply, no reply. Ah, oh, what? What do you think the toilet's for? Couldn't you be sick into that? There wasn't time to get over there. You did this on purpose, didn't you? I hope I'd have to clean it up. Don't be stupid. Or is being stupid a job requirement? Now put me in a clean cell. What, so as you can redecorate that one? I don't think so. I have the right to a clean cell. You have the right to a mop and bucket. Oh, Sergeant, thank you so much. Oh, look, a new set of stripes. Can I help you, sir? Yeah, you've got my wife here. <laughs> yeah, Annie, you arrested her. Her mate told me. I've come to get her. Well, I can, uh, I can ask if it's all right for you to see her, but, um... Well, you can't just take her away if she's under arrest. She's got to feed the baby soon. Well, don't you use powdered milk or something? But I don't know how to mix it up. It's her job. What? I'm not one of the train robbers, for goodness sake. It's all cold on the phone. Well, I apologise. Well, Your husband's here. 13, 14... He's brought the baby. What? It's not very happy, apparently. She, not it. What's her name? 
Louise. Do you want to see Louise? No. N not yet. Cheers, Kath. Come on, sit down. You don't have to see him. It's your choice. But think about the baby. That's all I do these days. No one else does. Your husband? <laughs> he reckons it's all down to me. I just wanted a bit of time by myself. Used to be a laugh when I was out with my mates. That's all I wanted tonight. Another laugh. Not another night at home with Louise and Ricky and Ricky's mum and dad. <laughs> they treat me like a slave, you know. I make all the meals for everyone just because it's their flat. So you used us for a bit of light relief? Yeah. <laughs> She brought me a cup of tea. No one's done that since I had the baby. Do you want another cup of tea? Right, I'll get you one. Then you've got to tell us what you want to do, right? Kath, tea. So Laurie Coleman is your boyfriend, is that right? That's right. My boyfriend. Somebody else's husband. And how many times does this happen? Once a week. Our special treat, he calls it. I meet him in his office. He gets his leg over. I'll get a free dinner. Not very romantic, is it? Not the way you tell it. Only I thought tonight would be different. It's our first anniversary, you see. A year to the day since we first at you know. At dinner. <laughs> now tell me, Jill. Hmm. Does Laurie go into these restaurants with the intention of not paying? What happens? If I tell you that he does... Well, we'd have to talk to him about the possibilities of criminal deception. No, I can't get him into trouble. What are you saying? I'm saying that all his complaints in restaurants have been legitimate. They've all been civil matters. His wife would kill him if she knew. It would be nice to do Coleman for more than D&D, Sarge. Quite agree. Wouldn't worry, he's still in the lead. Four points for Jill Gibson's criminal damage. Two for Laurie Coleman. And half a point for poor little Annie. Oh, he seems fair. Well, leave it with me. If there's a way of nailing him, I'll find it. Mr Coleman. My wife. She won't be told about my friend at the restaurant, will she? No, of course not. You married? Was. Till I found myself in your position. Then you will understand, won't you? Yeah. Then you won't let the cat out of the bag? Trust me. Oh, Laurie, Laurie. I've been having a think. Your wife must be worried sick by now. Shall I give her a bell and tell her that you were drunk? <clears throat> no, 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 that's all. Get to come and pick you up. Oh, I don't know. Save a taxi fare. Yes, give it a tinkle. Give me a pen. I'll write the number down. Please. Just quiet, please. Come on. Please. Mr Barlow? Yeah. This way, please. Can't get it to shut up. It never does what I tell it. That's babies for you. You got one? Me? No. Do you want one? Yeah, well, he's been interviewed at the moment, so there's no big hurry. Yeah, OK, then. This way. It's the 
silly cow done something stupid? What, apart from marrying you? What's that supposed to mean? Work it out for yourself. My husband, Mr. L.J. Coleman, is held here in custody. I am to be informed of his release. Really? Will you tell the appropriate person I'm here? I'll wait. Yes? Um, yes, if you would, uh, thank you. I'll only get fine, won't I? Well, I can't say, but I wouldn't lose any sleep over it. Sleep? What's that? Night, night, Sarge. Look after yourself. How long will it be before I go to court? Well, I won't take long. Oh. How are you getting home, Jill? I don't know. Well, why not get a cab? You could wait in the front office. Oh, yeah, right. See the lady through, please. I'd follow her if I were you, Reg. Could be some points in this. Something you want, Reg? No, just looking. Thanks. You understood the caution, did you? I'm not an idiot. Of course you're not. Drunk and disorderly. No fine, no criminal record, no worries. Your wife's in the front office. I'll show you the way. I could do that, Sarge. It's all right, Kath. I can handle it. Laurie? Hmm. Oh. There you are, Reg. You ready to come out again? Yeah, well, I'm just going to, you know. <laughs> In a minute, sorry. Sorry, didn't know we... you were. Oh, God, oh, God. You all know each other? Help, please. Certainly. Mrs. Coleman, Jill Gibson. Jill Gibson, Mrs. Coleman. I think you both know Laurie, don't you? This isn't what you think, Laurie. Come on, let's get out of here. Mommy, what the hell's going on? Don't you touch me. Not again. Not another tart. Oh, you don't think I could fancy somebody like that, do you? Like what? There's only you laughing. Oh, what? <laughs> Cocked up everything. I saved your bacon tonight. You stupid bitch. What? How could you do something like this to me? Ah, oh, that's right. Go on, run off to your wife and I shall stay here and tell everybody about your deception. You were right. He didn't intend to pay tonight. He never intended to pay and I can tell you all the names and addresses of all the restaurants that he ever ripped off. What are you doing to me? Making sure you get your just desserts. You didn't have one earlier, did you? I'm going to take the credit for this one, Rage. Ten points to me. I suppose that's me out the money with a scotch. Not necessarily. That's enough! That's enough for that! Bread. You can nick him for assaulting a police officer. 